Midnight's Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to full shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. I'm Hope Madden. It's movie time. Mm -hmm. And Hope, this director, Terrence Malick. Yes, I've heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> now, you and I endured three hours of his A Hidden Life. Yes. Okay? And uh, I, I, the man just <laughs> lost his imagery. He does. His visual imagery. What did you think of A Hidden Life? Well, it, it certainly was beautiful. I mean, it was a beautiful film to look at. Um, and and it's, it's, it's his approach, which is certainly not a step-by-step -step sort of narrative. Uh, it's a lot of very painterly, beautiful images and sort of some voiceover and some narration and not a lot of dialogue. And I think it you worked. Think? I know. It worked really well a few years ago for The Tree of Life, yes. which is semi-autobiographical. Yeah. So it was really his ruminations very loosely on his own upbringing and his place in the universe. Darn Brad Pitt. Right. Yeah. I don't think it works as well here because it's another person's legacy, and um, it, it it was not as I thought a comfortable a fit. What did you think? Well, you know, I mean, first of all, this is the story, a true story mm -hmm. uh, about a. Uh, what do you call it? a conscientious object? Uh, this is a true story about a conscientious objector in the Second World War mm -hmm. uh, from Austria, mm -hmm. and he refuses to take an oath to Hitler. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, for a variety of reasons, and he then goes through the gamut of incarceration and then death. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is historical, you know. So for for Malik, mm -hmm. who who prefers those kind of abstract images. Yeah. This is, this is a bit new, right? To, to have a, a storyline like this. I, I, I think so, yeah. I mean, a true story with, you know, sort of benchmarks and, and a timeline to yes, follow. Yes, right. Uh, and and I, I don't think it fits as well. I mean, it's it's not that it's not a good film. It is yes, a yeah, good film. Yeah, it's it's right. obviously, it's, it's very moving. The performances are lovely. It's, uh, and again, it's just gorgeous to watch. I mean, this is set in Austria. It is. And, and oh, I, so beautiful. Uh, holy gosh. And, you know, every mood of the film can be reflected in the shots that he takes. Oh, absolutely. And, but most of all, it's just this idyllic little village. Mm -hmm. And they're working hard, but mm -hmm. they are just happy as can be. Right. But she, but she says something about those times were simpler. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, they were. Yeah, and, and he catches that. I mean, he captures that. And you, you mentioned, I mean, the mood. That's really what the whole film is, is a mood piece. And, and the way it shifts yes. and changes and becomes more dramatic and, and melancholy. And But it's... I it, it doesn't need to be three hours long. It, it just doesn't. And there are some scenes that are spectacular. There's a scene where... Franz is with a, a painter in a church, a, 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 an artist. Oh in a right, church. yes. And and it's and it's mostly just shots of them standing together and him watching him paint, and then uh, a narration over top of it. But it's it's a beautifully worded narration. And the film, I think, what it does the best, better than anything I've seen, is looks at how cowardice is comforting to the people around you. And courage is very challenging to the people around you. And and I've not seen, I mean, you've seen a lot of films about heroes and uh, films about people doing very brave acts. This is the first time I've seen a movie where almost everybody in the film just wants him to change his mind yes. and, and do the weaker thing. And, you know, you're reminding me that there are contemporary references here. Yes. To the, the growing autocratic movement mm -hmm. worldwide. Exactly. And uh, when... Malik forces you because he takes so much time with it. You're actually standing with Franz mm -hmm. or with Franny, and you're you're feeling everything that they're feeling. Uh, you're you're wondering, what would I do? Yes. I mean, isn't that the the human question? Yes. I, because as as he's reminded more than once, it's not going to mount to, as Bogie would say, a hill of beans. Right. For anybody for him to do this. And I think that that's one of the things I think is the real power of the film is that uh, that is not. I don't think it ever occurs to Franz that he is being a hero, that his behavior will affect anything other than himself. He just can't do it. Yes. He just can't do it. And I think that's, uh, first of all, a very admirable quality and something that we need to be reminded of. Oh you, don't, my. you don't have to make a sacrifice because you believe that it's going to change the course of events. You just can say, I'm, I'm just not doing this thing because it's wrong. <laughs> I'm just personally not going to do it. The, it. the film is loaded, though, because we all know Adolf Hitler. We do. And, and we all can say, by hindsight, 
good guy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I wouldn't either, but right. I'm not so sure. No, it's if true. If I had my family there. Yes, exactly. And, and what this meant, mm -hmm. and say, just lie, John, and and yeah. go on with your life. Right. And but he couldn't. Now here's the thing for me, Hope. Mm -hmm. I don't know enough about this guy. <laughs> and Malik is so visually yeah. powerful. Yeah. But there's only so much that can do without words. Right. I mean, well, think about his wife. He doesn't even talk about it. He doesn't even talk about this with his wife. No, as far as we know, he does not. I know. <clears throat> Because, uh, you know, and Malik's never been particularly interested. He's in interested in very specific moments. Yes. Moments that capture a mood, and that's all he's interested in. <laughs> and true. again, and, and as much as the, the movie is very moving and beautifully put together, I, I just don't think his approach fits this storyline nearly as well as it has for a lot of his other films. No, and I agree with you. Because you're right, it's not as if, and, and that's the point of the film, it's not as if it's a historical figure you're familiar with. Yes. We can't... Oh, okay, we've got the backstory already in our head. Here's a new way to look at it. We don't know who this person is. Honestly, we don't know what he does for a living. And, you know, and Malik doesn't think that that matters. He He's a farmer. I know. I know. But, uh, yeah, it's... And it's, you've got him virtually offering up his life and then the, the troubles that his family will go right. through for this, well, we know what Hitler was like, but, but does this guy, he won't, he won't say the oath to Hitler. So we got that. But all the interior stuff that must be going on with him, and believe me, we got a lot of close-up shots of this guy you. thinking. It's very pensive. <laughs> it is indeed. And every, There's a lot of pondering. And I know that all of us in the audience are sitting there and saying, gosh, I wonder whose film this is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, anyway, but it's, uh, it, 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 I think for people who love movie making, mm -hmm. like seeing something by Martin Scorsese, we, we have to see Malick. Mm -hmm. You know, and what, and you see, what might people know? The Thin Red Line? What would, what people have heard about besides Tree of Life? Thin Red Line? Anything else that comes to mind? I'm not sure. Uh, um, why can't I think of the, Nebraska? The, um, his very first film with, with Sissy Spacek and Martin Sheen. Um, oh, okay. Badlands. Uh, whoa, oh, yeah. very good. Yeah, that's my favorite. Wow, yeah. Because it has a narrative structure. Well, I'm, I'm going to say, <laughs> so many years ago when yeah. you're right. That's a more traditional film. It is. It is. <laughs> Great. But Tree of Life, Tree of Life takes this exact same approach, and is an astonishing, I would say, near masterpiece of a film. Yes. And, and you know, it's the thing, Malik. You're like, well, yeah, I have to go. <laughs> is this what you're saying? You can't not see it. Well, we can't not. No, see we it. cannot. And it's this is hardly a, a miss. You know, I mean, it's not as if it's a bad film. It's it's, it's quite a good film, and it's certainly yes, visually yes. glorious. But yeah. Well, as as we promised in our promo. We're going to bring the word to our audience. That's right. And we're saying to our audience, for the one or two people out there who can endure the three hours, right. this is one beautiful film. It is. If you care anything about cinema, it's just like seeing uh, Scorsese's Irishman. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's something that we'll do mm -hmm. that not all of our friends will do because three and a half hours yeah. of that is a tough haul. But I found that satisfying as I found this. So Hope Madden, A Hidden Life. Right. What grade would you give it? B. All right. And I'm going to give it a B plus. Uh, I'm just overwhelmed by the beauty. Mm -hmm. uh, it's partly what cinema does best and what somebody like Terrence Malick does really best. So if you've got three hours out, <laughs> three hours out there and it's like going through a museum for right? three hours. I can't last longer than an hour or two at a, at a good museum. <laughs> but this one I did. <laughs>